Ladies and gentlemen, duelists, it's time for the final of 2,488 players culminating in this last duel. Joshua Schmidt in the red versus Anthony winning the dice roll, leading us off with Port of Prosperity in the Rescue Ace deck versus Joshua Schmidt's bestial synchro strategy. Again, the most represented deck, even in top card, against uh, one of the most unique ones there. But this doesn't mean anything. Uh, nobody has the advantage right now. And let's see these reveals from Anthony. That's everything you could ask for. We've got defensive cards. We've got Preventer yeah. as well as Rota, the most important piece of the puzzle in Rescue Ace, the Hydrant. Will we be going Wee Woo in this final? Let's find out what he decides to pick here and uh, considers the options if we need that starter and does indeed actually go for the reinforcement of the army to get the warrior from the deck here. Activates it immediately. No responses from Josh. Ash Blossom doesn't come down on the prosperity. Actually going for the lifter here. Yeah, off to a pretty good start, honestly. And uh, this is actually the first time that we get to comment at Rescue Ace. And maybe for once uh, we get... Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't want to no. say it. <laughs> I mean, it was Alberto speak uh, for the event. Uh, and it's uh, very close. Ours, uh, unfortunately, failed Nadir. But let's see. Yeah, something uh, a little bit different, I suppose, for uh, us here, at least. Uh, Rescue Ace was massively represented. It was, I think, I want to say 16% of the total representation of the entire event. As uh, Actually, no, 12% of the entire yeah. event alongside Unchained. And uh, I suppose, perhaps oddly, Unchained did not convert anywhere near as well as Rescue Ace did. In fact, Rescue yeah. Ace dominating the top cut spot. But not actually going that deep into the top cut, but there is one final firefighter remaining, and his name is Anthony Lopez here as we are dropping down turbulence. And things are about to get bumpy as we set four cards directly Resolves from the and deck here. What a start. All right, we've got the four cards from the deck here set it directly. I mean, wow, it's uh, an incredible card and so much uh, value gained from a singular boss monster and will we continue on with some plays here to recycle with plays like our sunlight wolf uh, this deck is in fact playing the proxy magician version which sets up the terahertz uh, and that gives you the negate in the graveyard for uh, your turn one play let's see if he actually goes for that all right and uh there is a search here coming up Absolutely. Let's see. On the other hand, Joshua obviously has a lot of ways to disrupt this field. Going second with his runic spells, most likely we have seen him all over. And he has gone through quite a significant top eight. He knocked uh, two Labyrinth decks uh, with both Joe and then Dinka Bui. So he had uh, quite the rough uh, journey up to this final. Goes for Preventer here from the hand, making the Mascarena, not going into any uh, any Proxy Magician plays That's here. It. So Josh is going to draw for turn now and uh, fight through these last three set cards as well as the IP, most likely into SP, a little knight. Lots of uh, disruption and one card combos utilized in the Rescue Ace strategy, probably why it's been so popular this weekend. It's just an all-round versatile deck that has so many ways to just uh, generate advantage, control the field. But will it be enough? Seems like stand? he has three monsters and three spells, so pretty even end. Sometimes you want to see more evenly matched, perhaps you could say. <laughs> that would have been a card. <laughs> <laughs> here is the Bestial Lebellion being discarded from the hand, searching any Bestial from the deck here. Gonna get Magnemot most likely. Doesn't have a ton of uh, synergy in this matchup, unfortunately. The Bestial is a little bit weaker. Rescue Ace, a full fire engine. <laughs> Literally an engine, get it? Fire engine. Uh, so no uh, <laughs> light and darks to banish uh, to take advantage of the Beasties, but we're going to get Magnemut out of the deck regardless, and I think uh, we're going to be mostly relying on our Runics to try and uh, take this one down here. And we do have three spells in the hand here, one of which is Tip. And that's arguably the best one, so why not? Yeah, this matchup uh, is probably something that Josh has played a lot of going through this entire tournament. Lots of representation, as we mentioned, from Rescue Ace. What do you think about the Rescue Ace matchup versus Runix? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I wouldn't be, like, uh, so disappointed if I were Joshua to play against Rescue Ace. I mean, the title was impactful because, like, uh, this is 
huge honestly you have the preventer which basically gives you a free book of moon let's say and uh, i mean with this hand being drawn by joshua honestly it doesn't help much because yeah here with the three set from anthony uh, yeah indeed he's just trying maybe let just i mean i think joshua know what uh, rescue does right yeah <laughs> for sure so. we're uh, gonna contain here it looks like um that is let's see if there is a response uh, we know you yeah. but no doesn't seem like it so we'll resolve yeah so uh the rescue ace cards for those of you unfamiliar you uh, have a bunch of effects that you can activate such as special summoning negating as well as destroying uh, but they also benefit from bonus effects when you have Sorry. the hydrant on the field here and that is sort of the heart and soul of the deck because it's extremely important to maintain the Hydrant's presence so that you can get maximum value out of all of your spells and traps. And this is exactly the case here. Magnamut was negated, but also now cannot be used as material. So this is a pretty big here. I'm uh, curious to see if uh, we're actually in the battle phase, potentially, because we could have went battle phase uh, with the Magnamut, then try Ooh. and bait out Mascarena, but... That's a great card, though. Discarded uh, as he was forced to banish the Lubellion. He actually has the Saron here, which could just replace it right away. Yeah, that's a great discard here. We can uh, activate the uh, Hugin potentially. Um, it resolves? Yep, it does get good synergy off of that discard because now the Saronir can dump as well as searching out the all-important fountain. Saronir replacing itself here with the Lebellion, so the banish of the Magnemot, like I mentioned at the start. Not a lot of synergy in this matchup because you're really lacking the light and darks that your opponent can facilitate for you to give you essentially free summons and take away their resources, so we're going to have to use our own here, but it's okay. Saronir fills up the grave nicely, which means Lebellion should be able to become a uh, special summon to the field and uh, get that all-important regained up. But now Anthony decides that he needs to do something, and apparently he is about to put this face down, which now kind of prevents uh, Joshua from using his extra monster zone. So it could yeah. be quite problematic. Yeah, the extra monster zone kind of important here because it is where you summon all of your uh, runic fusion monsters from. So denying the ability to uh, utilize that right now means that we can't go into things like Chaos Angel, we can't do our synchro plays, and really important preventer activation here. Don't forget, we also have the Masquerade online still unused. So a huge amount of uh, disruption still left from Anthony. And obviously we have seen already Joshua key card in the deck, which is that branded regain to just keep on accumulating advantage. But here comes the tip, uh, even before the fountain, uh, just because of that Masquerina threat. Yeah, Runic Tip might have to try and search for something that deals with Mascarena before we can commit our Runic Fountain to field. Because uh, you do not want to have your uh, Fountain disrupted here. You can quite easily protect it, generally with the Hugin, but unfortunately that's been set face down. So our next uh, order of operations that we're going to have to deal with is the Mascarena. Yeah. And it looks like Josh is trying to find a tool to deal with it, either that going is. for Hydrant or Mascarena here. Absolutely, the flashing fire. Let's see what he banishes off the top. Nothing too relevant, it seems. Yeah. yeah there's not a whole lot of one-offs in the Rescue Ace deck that you're going to be getting uh, quite fortunate with because of the... Oh, uh, oh actually, it does commit the fountain immediately oh, okay. here. Okay. All right. So yep. I think that we're probably going to try and resolve the fountain, but I think Anthony does need to probably respond here. Yeah. Or at least in response to a runic being activated. Otherwise, on the new chain, will be able to uh, activate spot. the SP so when chained. But doesn't seem like that's the case. The problem is you have the flashing fire, so you can just chain that to the Mascarena. But finally, Ooh, we get okay. to see this part of Joshua's deck. We have been waiting for a while for this uh, Quems, and now we finally get to see one. Yeah, Quem is uh, sort of the other kind of normal summon engine of the deck here because it allows you to facilitate more uh, uh, synchro plays, it's also a light in the dark, which is pretty synergistic with your bestials. You can send the Cartesia from your deck to the graveyard, and if you uh, control a fusion at the end, you can return it to the hand for more resources, and does allow you to go into synchro plays here now. It's so important as well, because uh, Quem is a light rather than a dark, so it does mean you get a uh, lot of good uh, value from uh, Chaos Angel if you decide to go into that. 
And also with the duality, I was thinking, you know, when I was a shuffler, you know, because light and dark monsters that they have, you know. Yeah. All right, we're uh, chaining the trap here because we do not want to have Lovellian resolve. So the regained is a super important aspect of the deck here. We're going to chain... But there is a slumber. Wow. Wow. So the extinguish being stopped by the slumber protection here so that we can keep our Lovellian on the field and on the new chain as well. Really importantly, Fountain does have three targets in the graveyard. And this is where things can get really scary. Once you start resolving Fountain, things can really snowball out of control because that is when you generate all of that advantage and then you dig into more disruption and then it just keeps going and going until your opponent is depleted of resources and you've accrued a advantage upon your opponent of like five plus cards. Let's see if Anthony can do anything about this here. This extinguishes, yeah, just a huge dodge on the... Uh, Slumber, Goes but now the IP. I, yeah, IP Mascarena here being activated. So we do know that Josh searched out the flashing fire. Yeah, just considering the options here before resolving this flashing fire, but I think it's very likely we're going to have yeah. to stop this uh, yeah. Mascarena. And there it is. It comes down here targeting Mascarena. All right, chaining the, the yeah. rescue here. Yeah, the alert on the turbulence, it seems Sorry, like. Yes, the alert. Yeah. And yeah, seems like the chain will now resolve, and what a chain it was indeed. Two off the top here. Okay. And yeah, huge chain being resolved here. This was really important. We needed to have a way to deal with Mascarena, and that is uh, the most important part of yeah. the strategy is to resolve this fountain as we target these three spells, recycling them back into the deck, and then drawing three more. And you can see here, Anthony is uh, getting a little bit outgrinded right now. But now that Anthony has gone for the alert back on the turbulence, uh, this is what we will try to do. So I think uh, what Anthony is trying to do here is to dodge, uh, or rather use the effect of the turbulence to destroy a card on the field here. And well that is very really well, well spotted. Very, very, very well played. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, and I was the last oh, card the there. The rebellion. Wow. Huge defensive plays there by Anthony. What a play by Anthony. Big spot there to trigger the turbulence in response. Uh, sequencing that perfectly as well to make sure that the turn player priority resolves in Josh's favor so that he uh, can then use the turbulence as the chain link too. And, and that's passed. it. And yep. that's it. Passes what a turn, turn by Josh. Anthony. No. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. That is really, really yeah. well played from Anthony. Josh was looking like he was maybe in the commanding seat there, but yeah, Anthony... Uh, Navigated that really well. Yeah, that was good uh, catch, honestly, a with the great, alert. Great, great play from yeah. Anthony. I mean, we mentioned it uh, already. YCS finalist, so two time finalist at a YCS is no joke. Uh, yeah, and, this uh, is where yeah. things get really out of control here. We've got the headquarters being resolved here. It is just an infinite cycle that you can do with this deck, putting back your banished as well as in the graveyard, rescue ace spells and traps. And you can just keep resolving turbulence and the uh, uh, recycling. So you could just keep using yeah. these over and over and over again. What a show off from Anthony, Absolutely. honestly. Amazing. Very Rescue, well alert, extinguish, I mean. contain. The uh, fire uh, rescue ace strategy is just in full flow here. If you didn't need a display of such perfect gameplay from rescue ace, you've seen it now, Anthony doing really, really well here to keep Joshua Schmidt at bay. With that alert, honestly, I think that uh, that was the game changer. Yeah, with, for sure. Yeah, that's a huge swing. The game swing. would have been uh, probably over on Joshua's favor, but instead Anthony found the line and look at this advantage. Usually it's the Runic deck who, you know, can uh, get ahead in terms of card advantage, but wow. Yeah, just creating so much here because of the headquarters. Hugin goes back into the extra deck, but I Josh is completely left out top here. Decking, right? Yeah. Zero cards in hand, zero cards on the field. I think he has nothing in hand, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's really rough here. Josh is going to need something huge off the top here to try and come back into this game here. But I don't even know what you can possibly go for because Runic Fountain is going to need another Runic to resolve in order to actually maximize its efficiency here. And well, Anthony still potentially can go for more. Uh, 
Link plays in main phase two, setting up, I mean, whatever he likes. Can go into an SP still that we haven't used yet. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we'll see the uh, Proxy Magician lines come out. And uh, he is exactly what he's going for, but not just goes for a regular SP. Passes play back to Joshua, who will now go for the Cartesian. Let's see. Yeah, Cartesian returned from the graveyard here back to the hand as Josh draws for turn. That is two cards to a full entourage of Rescue Ace, uh, Rescue Ace spells and traps set off of that turbulence. Tough. Okay, we go for the Cartesia. One more card in hand. Cartesia can maybe go battle phase, try and attack over the Hydrant here, but turn off the uh, bonus effects of the Rescue Ace cards. Yeah, that's exactly what Josh is going to yeah. try and do here, but the Good Preventer point. activates yeah. the effect. And that could that set be the Cartesia it? face down. Josh scoops it. it up. That's going to be game number one taken down by Anthony. Incredibly well played with the Rescue Ace deck. Wow. Uh, especially to spot that with the uh, with the uh, destruction of the Runic Fountain. And I probably assume he maybe hasn't played against a lot of Runic. Yeah, well, that, that was a good catch, honestly. Yeah. I think that he was specifically waiting for the moment. You know, because like Joshua seems like if he was dominating the game once again, he came back into the game after a very solid start from Anthony. And uh, I mean, game one goes to him. No, it just goes to show how close this matchup is and how close this final will be between two amazing, amazing players. Uh, that this weekend are just absolutely killing it. But now that we can take a quick look at their side decks, we can try and figure out what their plan could be. And we are thinking uh, maybe of a card that we didn't get to see in action in the previous one. Yeah, a certain <laughs> word held by a Thunder Monster, we could say. Maybe that could come Well, in. yeah, Denko Seca in this matchup could be quite relevant. We'll see if uh, Josh decides to bring that down. There is a couple of answers you can go for in Rescue A, something like Preventer to set yeah, it. Maybe, maybe just could, set it. <laughs> could, could work potentially. We'll see how exactly that plays out. Josh also plays Phantasmi. Um, could be okay in this matchup. You know, there's a lot of ways to... Um, you know, generate more advantage via your link plays in Rescue Ace, but at the same time, you know, maybe Nibiru, mm, potentially, there's yeah. lots of lines that help you play around that. Josh's side doesn't actually look super well suited for this matchup. Um, but yeah, on the side of Anthony, uh, for his side deck, I mean, he gets to go second this time and deals with the uh, Runic deck with, I mean, it's really popular. We've seen it in every single side deck. It's been more represented than Ash Blossom even this entire tournament in all of our players' deck lists. That is Droll and Lockbird, a huge card that he could see in this matchup that could potentially change things around for him. Yeah, we have seen it uh, again uh, in the top eight uh, match uh, where it seemed as if Joe Droll and Lock would completely shut down Joshua, but in the end, uh, that wasn't the case. Uh, but obviously, Labyrinth and Rescue Ace are completely different. Labyrinth, you know, unless uh, you get things going and the entire setup is kind of slower at setting up the game, if uh, you take just one turn away, as we have seen here from Rescue Ace, uh, that gets tough. So maybe Droll and Lock is much better in this particular matchup. As we're the waiting for the players to side up here, you can probably see here just about the beautiful exactly. trophy up for grabs. This is the another verse Glutonia. And let's remind why they are dueling and yep. for what they are dueling. This is it. Uh, obviously, we have mentioned it uh, today during the course of the weekend. Uh, you know, Simony, top of Swiss, uh, got his chance to walk home with the oversight copy, but. Uh, here they are facing off uh, not only for the beautiful trophy, but for the ultra rare prize card of another verse Glutonia, and that is nothing to disregard. So there is a lot on the line, of course. Just as a reminder, once again, Joshua trying to win his fourth. Wise, yes, which is just a ridiculous thing to even mention. While on the other end, Anthony trying his redemption arc from Wise, yes, Leon, which is just an epic story, honestly. Epic storytelling. Thank you guys for the script. Some of us don't even have four tops, let alone uh, four wins. So uh, that's up for grabs here. That's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, no, this is uh, definitely a heavyweight matchup here. Anthony proving himself as a comp competent finalist. Can he take it all the way? Uh, up a game against the world champion of Macedo. I mean, you must be feeling pretty confident right now, right? Yeah, I mean, although, I mean, he's been a YCS finalist, uh, the pressure must, must be on him, honestly, after, you know, impressive year by Joshua. And, uh, I mean, sitting there at the YCS final uh, as a world champion, honestly, I mean, it's a big deal. And uh, I think he also, did he lose a final? I mean, he won three. 
I with think, Joshua? Yeah. I think he lost the final, or maybe, I mean, he made out the top fours, I'm pretty sure, but For I remember sure if he lost the final. For a few times, yeah, a couple times, but yeah, yeah it's a good nationals, question, actually. Right? I think he lost in the finals of national for sure to Alpai back, but like back in the day we were talking yeah. about. But in terms of ways, yes, is yeah, maybe not. Maybe he's undefeated in finals. So. And now we're <laughs> jinxing That's again. That's a record. Yeah, <laughs> that could be. I, I'm not sure, though. I'm not sure, so let's not count on that. But Just a small update for you, those of you at home wondering why we have a bit of a delay here. We're just uh, doing a small check on uh, some sleeves here. Um, so we're just going to have a double check, make sure everything is in order for the players so that they can actually have, um, yeah, just a, a good duel uh, for the rest of this match here, making sure everything is in order, nothing is damaged. Um, so that's what we're waiting on right now as we uh, are sitting here um, for this game number two here. Uh, if it's possible, perhaps we can maybe bring up the deck breakdown once again, perhaps yes. so we can talk about that. Um, and just show you just exactly what has uh, unfolded this weekend because, I mean, yeah, we've yeah. talked about the story uh, all weekend. That is the diversity of the format. And here is top 64. Yeah, and uh, funnily enough, uh, we do have, uh, you know, what are the two most represented decks in the final? Because we have Rescue Ace and Other. Because <laughs> this is exactly what's going on here. Rescue Ace uh, was very represented. It didn't really perform that well throughout Top Card, but Anton Lopez was the last one standing uh, and he's here 1 0 up. But among the different variety of decks. Uh, Joshua Smith was, you know, a loner as well. And uh, that deck surely shocked us this weekend. Uh, uh, it found along his line in the top cut a lot of, uh, gotta say, lighter dark decks, uh, which is why his bestial side of the deck really, really shined. But now in the final, he's up against uh, a fire one, and those might not be as good. But yeah, again, just as a reminder, we have had an incredible weekend of Yu-Gi-Oh! A lot of action. I suggest any of you guys, if you have missed any of the future matches or even our very cool, I want to say, reenactments uh, through either Master versus Caster and the Duel Chronicles, uh, uh, you can just go back and check out any of the action that you might have missed alongside obviously checking on our social media pages some of the prizes and some of the other events that we have had. We had a very successful Ultimate Time Wizard event for 2005 with hundreds of duelists gathering and in the end it was Daniel Estella, another YCS winner, who walked home with a copy of Kaiko, which was really, really cool giant card for this exclusive event. So I'm giving another way to just have fun and compete in Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, we'll see whether the next one will be and uh, who will take it home. But yeah, it's a lot, a lot of different events this weekend. Yeah, no, Time Wizard uh, 2005, uh, notoriously popular here in Italy. And if you ever go to a YCS, for those of you watching at home, if you are interested in taking part, you know, if you aren't actually a fan of the, the current format, there's plenty of public events with historical Time Wizard formats going down. Um, and, you know, we uh, host a lot of uh, 2010. That's really popular. 2005 is what we have on this weekend. And huge prizes up for grabs. Uh, for yeah. And the level of the competition, honestly, was huge because we had, uh, as mentioned before, uh, Italian national champions coming over. Yeah, that was, and, uh, that uh, was I mean, a blast, you know, from the past. It was not easy to make top eight, honestly, at this side event. So, I Just mean, a small update for those of you wondering, we are currently after game number one here. Josh Rushman is down mm -hmm. uh, a game to Anthony Lopez. Rescue Ace versus uh, Bestial Synchro Runic. Um, players are currently just uh, re-sleeving right now. Um, so once they get that yeah. done, we'll be able to jump back into the table uh, and get some more action on yeah. the way. But in the meantime, for our uh, viewers, so maybe you can type in who you think is going to take this final. So just in chat. Uh, type in, in the chat. Remember, absolutely. try not to be too biased. Uh, <laughs> I know who you'll be supporting. Um, but yeah, Josh has done a game here. You know, he's got a lot to fight back through. Uh, last feature match, he lost game one, yeah. complete break, and then reverse sweeped it. So absolutely. there's so much drama to unfold here, potentially. You know, there's still a lot to come. Uh, your way right now. Yeah, and you know, you know, some of these uh, fierce animals, when you push them against the wall, they become even uh, tougher to beat, and that might be the case for Joshua. Down again, as mentioned, one game, but still completely in this uh, this matchup. Can resume now as our duelists uh, are almost ready to fight it back once again, and uh, we'll be able to see who will take this one home. Uh, I think we might still be in the process of side decking right now. Yeah. Um, yep. But yeah, the uh, 
Yeah, so the sleeves have been uh, corrected. Um, so yeah, we're just going into the siding process here as uh, yeah, you've got to make sure you've got a good side plan going into your game twos and threes. Don't forget a lot of players uh, sometimes underutilize side decking, right? At least 50% of your duels are played with a side deck and players sometimes don't practice it and have a good game plan um, going into uh, their games two and three. Do you have any uh, suggestions or advice for uh, no, the absolutely, side deck? Absolutely, absolutely. I am a big, big uh, side deck uh, fan in terms big of the side deck guy. Absolutely, big <laughs> side deck guy. No, not even joking, but yeah, it's it's the number one uh, thing you should uh, you should think about. Because as you mentioned, at least 50%, but most likely it's going to be 66, you know? So you, you play more games with the side deck, and that's a really important thing of your deck. And I really like experimentations. And uh, you can see already in our two finalists, two completely different opposite uh, ways. And Anthony, a lot of different tech cards. Joshua, five free offs, and that's it. So, yep. really solid uh, choice from Joshua. Makes sense. Uh, although he has Runic and he can draw multiple cards, he just wants maximum consistency. Those five cards are the one he feels like are the best, uh, and that has worked out for him. But, again, we have Anthony against Joshua, and we are ready to see who will be the winner of game two. Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Game two underway here at the finals of YCS Bologna 2023. 2,488 duelists have taken part in this event, and it all comes down to this last duel. Your runic tip is led with here by Joshua mm -hmm. Schmidt. That's a good start. Uh, your uh, ability to just search your deck for anything is absolutely powerful. And Josh Oof, actually ooh. opting to go... <laughs> That's a one big off. one. He lost to that card in game one, and now <laughs> that card is, for now at least, gone. Well, one okay. singular banish off the top here, and Runic Tip hits a critical piece of the puzzle here. Going for the Runic Fountain, uh, reason for that is uh, it's sometimes easier to play through different hand traps your opponent might have, just so you can guarantee that you get the uh, resolution here. Uh, rather than holding out and searching the Fountain, uh, it's a good way to play around Droll and Lockbird. Okay, and now he's going to play oh, around that's a good with discard. Wow, what a start. Yeah, playing around the Ash Blossom on the Fountain. Let's yeah. see if there is uh, some response from Anthony. He's thinking about it. Chainlink 2 for Hugen here, as you mentioned, protecting the Fountain from direct uh, uh, contact from any sort of hand trap like the Ash Blossom, which means that we will be able to draw two cards here. And then on the new chain, the Sarnir can activate to send the Lebellion. And if we have yep. any other Bestial in our hand, which very likely we could see here because we're drawing two cards. Uh, that's going to facilitate some Lebellion plays. Well, for now it seems like Anthony's fine with this. Uh, it will resolve and... Yeah, so uh, even if Anthony drew the side deck Droll and Lockbird, the question is, uh, will it be enough here? Draw phase, Runic Tip means you can't draw, and then on resolution you go to your main phase. And this is where you start performing multiple searches off of that one chain, protecting you and insulating really well. So uh, it hasn't Ooh, come okay. up here, but it still is kind of relevant for... for Sends the Magnamut, so maybe you are drawing the regained. Uh. Let's see. Oh, no, okay. Oh, he does okay. have the Lubellion. Yeah. Okay. We got a triple Lubellion in our hand or something, maybe? He's dumping <laughs> the Magnamut. That's interesting. Okay. Promising start. Ooh, Joshua. the Bestial Ooh. Lubellion. Sorry, the Bestial Alibur. Uh, this is a card that you don't see very often here. We actually haven't even seen this in uh, branded decks, honestly, but the reason that this is valuable is because it is a normal summon level 4 tuner that is a searchable target from Lebellion. Yeah, nice it's addition. Pretty interesting card, and thanks to the Runics, this allows you to get easily into uh, Baron de Fleur, for example, pretty much like the Naturia Runic deck that, I mean, Joshua even won the World Championship with, did, so... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just thinks 5Ds was the best year of Yu-Gi-Oh! and just wants <laughs> to be synchroing as much as possible because we are going into a 6 year, and that's going to be the Coral Dragon. Yeah. And this is exactly what I was mentioning. Second copy of Fountain here, which means that we're going to get at least a draw one. Yeah. As we go for the Dispelling, can go for Jerry. Jerry return the other Fountain from the graveyard to the hand, resolve the Fountain if we don't have any of the more Runics. And, uh, oh, that is, yeah, yeah just, we are going to go for end. one. Yeah, one goes to end, and one goes to the bottom yeah. to draw a card. So and only then... one draw, we're not saving for a second one here, but also the value that Coral Dragon can offer as a synchro up into 10 means that it is a tuner synchro, 
allowing you to access Baron. And on top of that, when it goes to the graveyard, you can draw another card. Don't we just love drawing cards? <laughs> Not bad at all. Yeah. No, yeah, it's a very solid Ooh, start. Uh, and this Valor. Valor is okay, honestly. I think I'm happy if I'm Joshua. Yeah, you're completely fine with that there. Yeah. Effect Valor comes down on Jerry. We don't get the second fountain. I guess we're only going to have to settle for drawing three cards this turn. What a shame. And we'll draw a fourth one with Coral right now. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that's even that's more fine. here. Yeah. Yeah, I bet Anthony is uh, really disappointed to have not drawn that all important draw in Lockbird, which we've seen so many people play over the course of this weekend. Really is the uh, tech card of the format. And we see one more off the top here with the Coral Dragon. The question is, do we have a way to... Okay, yeah. there's the regain there. As expected, uh, he did have the regain in hand, uh, and now do let's we have see. any beastie? We do actually wow. have another beastial. What a hand from Joshua. Huge. Yeah. Summoning the beastial here just in order to trigger the regain so that we can put the uh, Jerry back into the extra. Draw one card. I think we're up to five this turn, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. five. Awesome. Great. Cycling your deck for five feels great. And then the uh, regained added resource as well on your opponent's turn. Remember, every single time that your opponent special summons once per turn, you can bring back a uh, bestial from your graveyard. And we did send the Magnum up, and that's going to get a further search in the end phase. It, it really is just card advantage the deck. From what I understand, I don't think Josh plays the trap card for Lebellion. I think he's not playing it. Uh, let me. Yeah. No, he's not. I think he uh, did discuss with me a little bit before the event okay. if he was going to uh, potentially try and play it just for different matchups in the side deck. Uh, turns out that he has opted to not go for that. So a, uh, another runic being activated here. I think that was the destruction. Yeah, again, uh, this allows him to go in once more into the Jerry and now recover the fountain as it's not once per turn. And that goes the SP Little Knight. The Little Knight synergy with Baron the Floor is absolutely disgusting. You can actually use the effect of Baron, negate a card your opponent yeah. controls, activate Little Knight, banishing itself and the Baron until the end phase. The Baron returns to the field. Remember, Baron's effect is once while face up on the field. So then it leaves the field, comes back, and then you can use the negate again. Yeah, and there are so many synergies, not just that. Even the regain, the plus SP Little Knight, we have seen now against dark or light decks uh, makes for a very nasty combo where you just banish both, but then shuffle back while you banish for your opponent, uh, yeah, and exactly. only your Little Knight comes back. So this deck is full of, uh, you know, intricacies, and yeah. Yeah, we'll see if it comes up here. Anthony does have a lot of good, powerful light and darks in the extra deck with the Cyburst engine, as mentioned. Mascarena, Deco, uh, not Deco Tito. He isn't actually a fire, isn't he? Yep. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's a couple of interactions that, as you've mentioned, work really well this format, and it's probably why Regained is uh, such an important piece of the puzzle here. But uh, Rescue Ace not going to be worried too much Did here. He? Did he yeah. just pass turn? Wow, Anthony okay. just passed back to Joshua. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, there are a few duelists which I've seen, you know, I remember Dinka was uh, in a previous format saying uh, against the runic decks, sometimes you just want to do for this because then they cannot really attack. You skip their turn, but yeah, it's definitely unfortunate when you don't have enough. Yeah, there's a, there's a world you can just pass because you're not in risk of, uh, you know, losing the duel since they can't go to the battle phase. Yeah. Um, but I'm just worried that Josh might get ahead a too far on... No. Oh, past, yeah. wow, okay. Back. As okay. you see, passed. So Anthony actually was really with a heads up play here. Makes sense. All and right. Now, though, we cannot really play that game uh, anymore. We need to do something, and uh, we have one additional card to do that with. So Yeah, I, I guess you could see it as some sort of indirect one day of peace activation. If, yeah. you, really, if you really squint hard enough, that's just what happened. So Anthony having another extra card to... Uh, have a turn here. Let's see if he can do anything about this because, as you mentioned, no runics were activated on Josh's turn. Josh just goes draw pass, doesn't activate any runics to resolve Fountain because you will have to skip another battle phase. No point in that. So let's see if we can hold down the fort with just the SP and the Baron as well as a mystery set card. Well, Anthony might have thrown honestly because he's thinking about it, but uh, yeah, maybe he just doesn't see a line uh, that's, uh, that does it. And there are still 19 minutes left in this, 26 already down, and this is going to be a tough one for Anthony. And he Pass. passes Pass back again. once again. Wow. 
That is what really draw unfortunate. Into? Like, gosh, that's I mean, full like hand traps or something. Like, are there two veilers? I don't know. Like, yeah, know. that's that's really rough here. Well, um, and Josh can probably just I, try and summon uh, out. Maybe a beast dealer or two should be enough to round out the game here. But yeah, but maybe he has a read again. And, uh, okay, no, he's gonna bounce it back. Okay, interesting. So Joshua probably sees a line where he can uh, end this duel right here and puts back the Baron and yeah, does have a cram. Yeah. Special summoning the Magnemut out of the graveyard with the tag out effect of Baron, versatile monster, Omni negate, as well as that synergy we mentioned with Little Knight, but also recurring from the graveyard. And our normal summon Quen's gonna dump Cartesia. That's gonna give us more follow up if we can't find a way to find game here. But with a six and a four, we can indeed just go back into the Baron before we end our turn here. But first and foremost, let's see if Josh can figure out any extra damage right now. It doesn't look like it, actually. Every deck has its strengths and weaknesses. Drawing a million cards and controlling the field really well is one of them. But dealing a ton of damage, sometimes uh, runic decks can struggle with that, with the battle phase restriction and just not being able to put up so many uh, big bodies and monsters. Although the Bestials do facilitate that quite nicely, but... Not in this situation. Josh is going to have to settle for remaking Baron. Yeah, and now there is essentially one more turn for Anthony to do something to stay in this game. Shoot. Otherwise, we are going to go to just game three. Let's see. Drew's Worm is added back in the end one phase here. One more draw. Magnemut searching from deck or adding back from grave. Can't summon the Magnemut now to try and generate free advantage because Anthony does not control a monster, so... Beasties aren't completely free. And yeah, Anthony essentially got to just pass and see three extra cards over the multiple turns there. And yeah, this is it. We need to play now. We're going to go Diabell Star, sending a card from our hands here. We're going to dump that headquarters from the uh, hand to the grave there. Gonna chain the SP Little Knight here and Ooh, into an enemy, enemy controller. controller. Okay, let's I see. I saw this card in the side deck of Anthony. I was really curious and wondering, is that a card you would bring in against Runic? Yeah, and we just negate here with the Baron. All right, let's see if there is anything else from Anthony. At least we have baited both SP and Baron. Yeah, that's uh, huge here. We're gonna set off of the Bell Star, getting the Sinful Spoil out of the deck here. And, uh,. Yeah, the uh, Sinful Spoil engine is probably what took Rescue Ace into domination over the last couple of months. You've probably noticed that Rescue Ace pre-Age uh, of Overlord wasn't exactly an incredibly consistent deck. Did have a lot of power and strength around it, but over the course of Age of Overlord, the Sinful engine has just given it so much consistency as we also uh, continue our turn here with Emergency. I mean, Anthony is trying, honestly. I mean, yeah, but not uh, the best. <laughs> Resolves. So right now, obviously, Joshua not really scared by this. Let's see. Yeah, a lot of uh, responses here. Regained will get to trigger on any summon and give you Magnemot more advantage. And if we uh, have any more Runics in our hand, which, you know, there's a chance that there uh, is after drawing so many cards, that can also snowball and further into more draws off a of Fountain. Here comes that Emergency. Mm -hmm bringing out the Hydrant and Tributes from the hand, a copy of the Turbulence. Yeah, not looking too good for Anthony right now, but Joshua on the other end is going to use that regain that gives him so much advantage and goes for a flashing fire from the end. Just one of the multiple runics he's probably holding. Yeah, Chainlink 1 regain, Chainlink 2 flashing fire to destroy the Hydrant. And I think we're doing this just to try and force out any other kind of uh, rescue ace spells and traps we have in our hand uh, to stop any potential bonus effects that might come down here. I think Anthony might have just one card in hand. Yeah, let's see. We have a discard, and then we have the tribute, so uh, we've gone quite minus here. Oh, maybe two card. Yeah, maybe two cards. All right, that's huge here. Okay. We're going to target the um, turbulence. Response, we're gonna alert. Is that rescue? I, I swear rescue, rescue and res come to rescue <laughs> and alert look exactly <laughs> the same, don't they? I think it's rescue, right? Yeah, yeah. this one's rescue. Mm -hmm. Target a monster in the grave and then you can special summon it to your field. 
Could also bring back our opponent's cards if necessary here. Here we go. We're going to bring back Turbulence. Two cards off the top. I think that was a lifter we hit there, but that is a three of, so not too worried about that. Let's see and if there is anything else from Joshua to stop this. Freezing curse. I mean, we could see the same as in the previous. So on summon here, Turbulence is uh, targeting the Runic Fountain to destroy. So Josh de deliberating whether we want to chain another Runic to summon Hugin and then protect. I think it's Joshua can also now just use it and he's gonna go for both the Magnamut and then the Fountain because as turn player Anthony has to be shielding one right here which allows Joshua to just resolve the Fountain first. Yeah, still gets value here because of the turn player priority. His fountain is always going to come last on the chain yeah, there. That doesn't really matter then. So fountain is gone, but Joshua still has drawn two cars. Must be some hand traps there if we're not using any other runics, I suppose. All right, Turbulence is going to activate yeah. the effect to set from the deck here. We already have one. That's going to be uh, potentially solid. The solid three turn more. though by Anthony again. Once again, trying his best to stay in this. Uh, Extinguish, uh, Contain, and Emergency. Search that of the deck here. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no alert, given that uh, it's being banished before. Yeah, we can recur that with a uh, headquarters if necessary, but I think uh, Anthony's already actually sent the headquarters from yeah. the hand, so... The long game is not what Anthony wants to play here, I think. But Alpha is not used, remember, so we do have some options available. Normal Oof, summon an Ash, ash. Awesome. Yeah. That's not how you counter Fountain. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any kind of, I don't know, maybe an Al Mirage or something to climb up to some Cybers plays, maybe? But we are going to see Joshua right here actually prompted that response and gonna special summon the druid swarm yeah resolution the regain gets to recycle the the uh, jerry we could draw one more card off of regain yeah and this is a beautiful cycle but as mentioned here we knew that the the bell star and ash that blossom play. in response wow. here and, and that's, that's it. it wow that's the final nail in the coffin for anthony the top deck ash blossom drawn from those fountain uh draws earlier is going to be enough for uh for Anthony there and we are going into game number three now what a final so honestly we are witnessing couldn't ask for more both duels have been incredible up until now and this is exactly what this matchup is about I mean a lot of back and forth a lot of advantage and a lot of uh, what we could say like vintage Yu-Gi-Oh -Oh! was all about which is uh, card advantage trying even those plus ones uh, and end up mattering but now Anthony gonna go first and gonna try to replicate what he did in game one with some important additions from his side deck, most importantly that draw and Lockbird. Yeah, I think the uh, gameplay that we've witnessed was uh, probably peak Yu-Gi-Oh! I think there was just so much back and forth, there was some really good in uh, intelligent plays there uh, from both players to navigate around each other's disruption and yeah, really well played. I think uh, this is gonna be a Fantastic game three. Yeah, yeah. Especially because like Anthony basically passed for two for for, <laughs> for two turns, right? Yeah. And then basically was almost able to come back into the game and uh, without having the alert in the game. Still, I mean, with the Ash Blossom, Joshua was able to seal the game. And in here, uh, there are three cross out designator that Anthony may be siding in if he really feels like. Uh, I mean, that might be good to stop Joshua's Ash, Ash Blossom. Uh, I'm really gonna have to find out some more about this cross out. Uh, in his side deck. Perhaps we'll see it in a profile at some point Absolutely. somewhere. But there's a lot of uh, curious targets here. Like he's playing Pearly Yee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I really like Cross that. Cross out though. for Pearly Yee. That's yeah. really interesting. That's really okay. up. But at the other end, uh, I want to mention one thing from Joshua's side deck, uh, <laughs> which is that if we look at the time, actually, we got ahead of ourselves, but there are about nine minutes remaining. And there is a certain card that is one of the free offs in Joshua's side deck. Uh, 
and uh, that uh, is a car that is a little spooky. Let's just say that. And uh, that could actually come even though there are only nine minutes remaining. But without further ado, our duelists are ready. After two days, there is only one game remaining to crown YCS Bologna champion. Let's find out who that will be. Can't hear it at home, but the crowd here has given us a loud roar for this game number three. We've gone tooth and nail to fight through this entire uh, huge tournament that we've got here. And Anthony pushing through. Uh, Joshua equally involved with a massive, uh, just, just huge back and forth from both players over the last game or two. And now it's time for Anthony playing at lightning wow. speed yeah. here, recognizing. Looks like as if only one minute remaining, no? <laughs> yeah, he's playing as if we've got 30 seconds on the clock here, but I think he sees the lines, the combos. He's probably done this a million times already. And so it's just about flexing those, uh, the memory of uh, the combo lines here as we try and uh, set up as quick as possible. Because Anthony does know for sure that Josh's deck, uh, the Runic deck can defend itself uh, really, really well and is super resilient to damage and can just hold out here. And so he knows that he's going to need multiple turns uh, in order uh, to try and deal damage and get to a battle phase uh, that actually facilitates some damage for him. And by the way, just saying this is the third summon for Anthony. Just saying. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> but I mean, the speed is uh, quite impressive uh, from Anthony, as mentioned. Uh, and uh, well, there are eight minutes remaining, uh, and uh, this is uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and to be fair, can't blame him for it. Now, we'll see this emergency. It resolves. Great news for Anthony. Yeah, no Ash Blossom coming down here. There was no Droll and Lockbird summoning out the uh, Turbulence, tributing from the field here, and now Turbulence can get four from the deck. That's going to give all of the all-important Contain, Extinguish, Alert, and Rescue uh, onto the field here from the deck to be able to uh, start disrupting plays and then try and get to that battle phase on the turn three and deal some damage as we are hitting just about seven minutes on the clock here. Josh is thinking long on this turbulence here. Do we have a response for it? And that is Nibiru, the primal wow. being. Would you believe it? The rock I comes know it. down. I yeah, know it. you were counting for a reason, I suppose. I Nibiru it. comes down here on the summit of turbulence. Oh, and a chain of Ooh, Drew is Drew's in response as well. As well. So that's going to send the token. Um, and Josh is, uh, yeah, just summoning a 3,000 body. They're preventing the turbulence from being summoned. And what can Anthony possibly do right now? That was the big play that he had available to him was the uh, turbulence. Yeah, that's crazy from Joshua. Just what you needed there. Perfect, perfect pair in end. And wow, Anthony, yeah, just gonna Summons pass a play. Preventer and sets one card to pass turn here as Josh in the, the end phase, wow. another Magnum. And he's got three targets as well because the Dark Monsters uh, Link Karibo was made in the graveyard. Magnum gonna get a search in the end phase for Lebellion, the Bestial Oliver, whatever you want. And that's <laughs> gonna give you, well, I mean, as long as Josh doesn't activate a Runic card, uh, he can deal some sort of damage, surely, only through one singular back row remaining from Anthony, completely out of resources. That Nibiru wiping away the entire field. Unbelievable. This is an incredible game. Um, oh my. <laughs> I mean,. I don't know. And we got the normal wow. summon, Quen. As well. Huge normal summon with Lebellion as well in the hands here. And I forget dealing a little bit of damage. I think we could potentially try and go for game right now. A huge what swing. What are we saying? Here. What game is this? Yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy <laughs> opening. The Magnamut once again limited, but glued to Joshua and this weekend. And well, this is uh, an amazing turn. I don't know what happened. We had a nice little slow back and forth over the last game or two. Big technical plays, but now we are just lighting the fire here as both players going all in. There is the Baron the Floor being summoned now, activating the effect to destroy the last spell and trap card. The only spell and trap card on the field is an infinite impermanence being forced out here. Sure. Yeah, no, you're fine with that because Baron can only be used once while on the field. You don't, no real reason at all to negate this. Let that resolve and you've got 3,000 damage through to the life points directly. Does Josh have any more here? 
unbelievable turn of events here. What a huge swing. And it looks like we have uh, the activation in hand of what appears to be another bestial. Yeah, yet another one. That's the one he added with the Magnamut. Yep, there's the Saranir here. Curious if we'll maybe send it at some point, link the way to dump Lebellion, but I think uh, we're just trying to find some damage right now. I think we'll have to bottom face. No. What, you know, in hindsight, if Josh just uh, destroyed the monster and negated the Imperm, I think we would have had more than enough for, uh, for a game, honestly. But, all right, this is still going to be working out quite nicely. Saranir sends, Lebellion summoned out. Going to send the card to the graveyard, set up regained. No yeah. access to runic cards so far, but obviously no reason to works, use them early. Doesn't need them. <laughs> yeah. This works out. Yeah. I mean, the runic cards yeah. carried him all weekend, but right here in game three, my win without a single runic card. Yeah, no, he just needs to get to the battle phase and deal some damage, and then we wow, can handle that later. Duality. That's duality being activated, spinning away the Lebellion, summoning out the deck. The extra deck, rather. Scarlet yeah. Red Dragon Archfiend for damage in time if necessary. I don't know if it's going to be required, but Duality's bonus effect in the graveyard, recycling a light and a dark to draw another. As a wise man once said, I'm a banish a light and a dark, but instead we're returning it to the graveyard to draw another card. Can we facilitate or see any other pieces of the puzzle to give us more damage here and just go for game? Pure bestial. <laughs> How much yeah. damage can we even do here? We can do uh, 6,000 and then effect, destroy. That's going to be 75. We need. We just need 500 damage. Yeah. I think that is... Yeah, 75, yeah. yeah. Do we have anything else? Josh just needs 500 damage from the hand in the battle phase to be able to take this out here. Looks like we're going to the battle phase. Nibiru, the primal being, attacks over. And the preventer actually floating back into the lifter here. Very important. Um, chooses not to uh, negate with the Baron effect here. Yeah, because it's negated by Impermanence. Yeah, of course, the Infinite Impermanence did yeah. resolve earlier. Yeah, okay. Oh, and oh, 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 but wait a second, because I have a doubt. Uh, wasn't uh, the same regain column as the Impermanence? I'm just noticing. Uh, oh, I think hang on, it that was, was the... Uh, wait, that was the Imperm column. As imp yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it was the same Impermanence column. Uh, did we use regain draw effects? Yeah, it was the yeah. same column yeah. as uh, the regain, right? But we haven't used any of the effects, I think. So just ke let's keep that in mind, I think, yeah? Right? But just as a, yeah. Okay. Uh, just, just to remind, I guess, as, as if it ever happened. But I don't think we drew a card, right? No, I'm not sure that we actually recycled anything, because we only, uh, did we recycle the cards? We only have one Banish monster, although we summoned, what? Was it two Beasties? One of them was Link Karibo, one of them was the Quem. I think it should be okay, right? Because they didn't. I mean, it's the same column, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think I, they were used, though, no, yeah. right? No. Uh -huh. So, for now, all good. Yeah, that's all right, good. All right, yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. That's good. Um, so, yeah, 5,000 damage has been dealt here. Uh, linking away the Nibiru and the Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. Doesn't need to use the uh, effect to burn here because we've done 3,000 in the battle phase. Linking away into SP Little Knight. Remember, we talked about that incredible synergy with Baron and the SP. Absolutely, and, and with just two minutes remaining, this is uh, quite a tough uh, field to break and then deal damage. Wow. We haven't used a single runic card, by the way, just uh, remember. So, uh, you know, Swiss Army Knife of a deck can do anything, I suppose. Normal Summoning Hydrant. And Anthony has 1 minute 30 seconds to deal with SP, Regained, Crazy. Baron, and make 3,000 damage just to tie this up. Regained is going to resolve here on the Summit of a Monster. Specials out the Druid's Worm from the Graveyard. And now we're going to activate Hydrant. Will Josh negate and destroy this? Do we hold here? We're going to think for just a moment here. It will make sense to negate it, right? Because you know that there's a spell in Anthony's hand. All right, so Baron negate. Yeah. Negate and destroy the Hydrant. Is Does there anything else from here Anthony? Here we go, activate. Turbulence, Turbulence is in the hand. Okay. But the time is... Oh my god, one T minute time remaining. Is, time is ticking, time is ticking. We're banishing two here. Special summoning turbulence on summon. Oh my god, summon. what an ending. We could use the Little Knight here. No, nope. okay, we're gonna let wow. that hit the field here. And now we're gonna reborn the turbulence, it looks like. Is there a response from Joshua. Seems like the Little yeah, Knight I will be used. I think we are definitely gonna have to use Little Knight yeah. here. Activates Little Knight, banishing itself and the turbulence a second turbulence hits the field here with 30 seconds left on the clock it doesn't matter if you can set 27 cards from the deck here we need to do 3000 oh damage 
One more card, what is it? Rolls off the sinful <laughs> engine. Do we have anything else here? That's a preventer from the hand here that we are banishing oh to God. special summon. Hits the board. Can we deal anything? 3,000, remember, four cards being set from the deck here. 10 seconds left. 12 what seconds, 11 ending? seconds. 10, not crazy, 10 seconds, crazy, 9 crazy seconds. Crazy ending here. And wow. Anthony playing at lightning speed. Even at eight minutes, he recognized that this was going to be a long duel and was playing at supersonic speed, but... And there seems it like is. time might Zero be Zero seconds left. Any seconds That's it. now. 5,000 life points, Josh on wow. 8k. And here we've got two bodies on the field sending off the turbulence. Did we resolve the turbulence yet? We yes, we did. Yeah, we did, but did. only one target one was target? left. That's so insane. now, again, moments away. He's just trying to figure out what he has. He has e -tau. Can he even bring anything back? Scarlet is dark. Okay. Wow. Uh, confirmation from the judges. Uh, time has been called. Time has been one. called. There is no error on your screen. This is this is it. This is, we need to do 3,000 damage in the main phase. Um, <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll, do, do we have it? <laughs> How? How? Yeah, it seems like it's just uh, a matter of moments and Joshua might have pulled this one off because there is no battle phase for Anthony. Wow. Okay. Uh, making some link plays here. What, what can we possibly commit to? 3,000 no, damage. Like, I think he's how? just uh, realizing what's going on and unfortunately can't blame him unless there is uh, <laughs> some ace up his sleeve, uh, really considering all of his lines. But Fi final like yeah. chance here. This is the this is the end of the, it's the main phase. Like, yeah, what can we do? Like, we're gonna go heat up. Okay, heat up. Bring back the uh, airlifter. Mm -hmm. Do something with Celine maybe because we have a spellcaster. There is Bring the back Celine another monster into a link four. Okay, we're gonna go SP, SP a little on the here. face down. Uh, okay, the face down, chaining it. Runic slumber, protecting the Baron. It okay, seems protecting Baron from destruction. Doesn't wall up with Jerry or anything like that. Not needed. Banishing yeah. two cards. And that's it. Just shakes the hand. That's it. GG. It's over. George Richmond takes down another YCS. Bologna 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible match. What a match and what an ending it was. Uh, down to the last second. Once again in time. What a crazy ending. And what an event. Wow. YCS Bologna has been incredible with that. So many duelists, uh, 2,488 uh, from all over the world, over 12 rounds of Swiss and top 64. But in the end, once again, uh, it's Joshua Smith winning his fourth YCS. Uh, what a weekend we just witnessed. Oh my God, I love Quem is going to be the new uh, tagline and model for Josh. That is incredible. What a duel. No, what I mean, a duel. Right down to the wire. Match. Right down to the I final mean, duel. Nibiru uh, plus Drew Svorman. They had it all. I mean, uh, what a match. What a weekend. Uh, absolutely. Honestly, I mean, but uh, on the <laughs> other end, uh, kudos uh, to Anthony. He played his heart out uh, in what was a very tough final. And after losing already at YCS Lyon in the final, you really got to feel bad for him. But he proved once again that he's one of the best players in Europe. Uh, I'm sure he will have an amazing future ahead of him and probably at some point end up with the trophy of his own. But amazingly played. And in the end, The Rock. Nibiru was what won the finals for Joshua, most likely, and this Another is his. Another first, Glutonia is the trophy. So uh, congratulations to Joshua Schmidt, getting another accolade for himself. Unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, we are going to be having a uh, presentation of sorts uh, for this award ceremony to present Josh with his prize, the first place trophy. And again, yeah, thank you guys once again for being with us for the entire weekend. Uh, it has been a blast uh, to do commentary for this event uh, back in Italy after a while. But again, feel free, go back, watch uh, the entire journey of how Joshua was crowned four-time YCS champion. But what a weekend and what a day we just witnessed uh, through these amazing, amazing duels. Uh, and now let's uh, hear it from the man himself with... Head. Attention duelists, your champion of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series live in Bologna is none other than the man himself, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Schmidt! Congratulations, Joshua. You've just come off the back of a world championship and now you're straight back into winning YCSs. How does it feel? 
<laughs> Thank you so much. It, it still feels surreal every single time. It's I, I, It never gets old. <laughs> it really doesn't. Well, speaking of getting old, nothing's going to get old like having a good old trophy handed to you. This is your trophy and your prize card. Another verse, Glatonia. Congratulations. Give it up for your trophy holding champion, Joshua Schmidt. Thank you so much to everyone who has been watching this show. This has been absolutely brilliant to do. Thank you to all of you at home for watching. Thank you to all of our judges. Thank you to everyone who's made this happen. And thank you to all of you, the duelists, who make these events happen. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this. One more time, give it up for your champion, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua Schmidt! That's going to be it from us. Thank you very much, all of you, for watching at home. And we will see you at our next YCS event very soon. Take care.